Okay, great. Um, all right, so basically we're gonna share some background today on what this project is that we're launching in Texas um, and share some background on what the Men's Story Project has been thus far uh, and what we're hoping uh, to create locally. Um, so, Emiliano, do you wanna take away this beginning? Yes, thank you, Josie. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Emiliano Diaz de Leon. I am the Men's Engagement Specialist with the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault. Uh, on behalf of TAS, I wanna thank you for, for joining us today for today's informational webinar. Uh, we also wanna thank Josie and uh, Josh for joining us. If you guys wanna introduce yourself uh, before we get started. Josh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Josh. Uh, Joshua, I like Josh uh, Gonzalez. Uh, yeah, I'm the Men's uh, Story Project Specialist, and I'm working here at TASA. I'm um, great to be on this team. Great to hear um, this presentation. Great to see y'all's faces. Hopefully, y'all uh, enter a submission as well. And uh, let's let's get it started. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, yeah, and I'm Josie Lair. I uh, founded the Men's Story Project 12 years ago in San Francisco, California, uh, and it's been a labor of love since then um, to be doing this work with groups around the US and also abroad in Chile, Canada, Gaza, and the West Bank. Uh, so I'm just really excited uh, to share about this project with you. Uh, so, in terms of the webinar agenda for today, we're going to just go through, you know, why a focus on masculinities, what, you know, what is the purpose of this project, um, and then why, what is the Men's Story Project itself. We're going to talk through what the Texas production is that we'd like to create, the kinds of stories we're seeking and inviting, how to submit a story, um, and then we're going to have time for your questions and comments, and also give you info on how to contact us. So the Men's Story Project starts off with the premise that men are beautiful human beings, right? People are fundamentally good. You know? And yet, you know, we, we, so, and we grow up in society where we get lots of messages, right? From media and, and all, all parts of society and how boys and girls and men and women are supposed to act and relate to each other and, and be and, and so on. And, in many cases, uh, with regard to more rigid or stereotypical ideas about masculinity, um, harmful ideas can get shared, right? So my background's in public health. And so I've been working in public health for more than 20 years. And I've been working in gender-based violence prevention and response, HIV prevention and response, uh, substance abuse prevention. And the bottom line is that you know, in terms of the why, of why we're doing this project and why we're doing this work, you know, this, this set of pictures is a lot of it, right? So research studies have found uh, that when men buy into more rigid or traditional or harmful ideas about masculinity, um, it has effects on a wide range of things, right? So they're more likely to engage in substance abuse. They're more likely to be abusive toward partners. They're more likely to um, feel like they have to be, you know, big and tough. And so it's, you know, it's linked to steroid use. Um, the leading cause of death in young men ages 16 to 24 is car accidents. And in many cases, they were in the car with their male friends, you know, so like risky driving. Um, I'm going to show you in a more didactic slide here, the findings of the research. Okay. So the bottom line is that ideas about how men should be and how women should be, um, they have an impact on everyone's well-being, right? And so studies have found, as I started saying on the prior slide, that men and boys who, who believe these more harmful ideas about what it supposedly means to be a man, they're more likely to engage in bullying or hazing or have homophobic or transphobic views or, um, either perpetrate or have attitudes that would support different forms of violence against women and other men and people of all genders. You know, there's higher rates of HIV and other STIs or unplanned pregnancy, you know, less 
work around the house or supporting uh, with the kids. Um, and it has an impact on men's mental health as well, right? So when men and boys feel like they're not allowed or that they shouldn't reach out for help or tell others about how they're feeling when they're having a, a tough time, you know, those men are less likely to have emotionally intimate relationships. They seek mental and physical health care later and less than women. They're more likely to have symptoms of depression and substance abuse, uh, risk behaviors. And even, you know, this extreme of mass shootings, you know, has been linked to really rigid um, or harmful ideas about masculinity. Um, you know, and overall, what it translates into when we have higher rates of risk behavior and lower rates of healthy and self-protective behavior amongst men, it actually translates into higher death rates for men. Uh, in the U.S., men die years earlier than women from most leading causes of death because their illnesses are caught later because they went to the doctor later. They have higher rates of suicide. You know, so there, there's really a significant public health and social justice issue here around how it is that boys and men are taught and raised and pressured and socialized to be men and the impacts on their own health and well-being and the impacts on health and well-being for people of all genders around them. Right. And yet, where's the public dialogue? Right? And so that's where the Men's Story Project comes in. Right? And, so, and so research has been finding that when we do work that helps to visibilize and promote healthy masculinities in society, it helps to promote more well-being for everybody. Um, and yet, again, where is the public dialogue? And you know, we're hearing it more and more now. You know, there's these phrases of toxic masculinity, which people, you know, have arguments about. What does that mean? Is it a useful phrase? And we can talk about that. You know, the, uh, the bottom line, I have this image of the elephants in the living room to say that, you know, I think <clears throat> having been doing this work since 2008, I think that this topic of masculinity is oftentimes the elephant in the room that people don't even see. <laughs> you know, not just the thing that people aren't talking about, but oftentimes, you know, people don't even realize that there's anything to talk about or that can be changed, right? And so there's these phrases of boys will be boys and that's just how men are and, you know, life is just like that. But really, and, and kind of taking it for granted that this, you know, cultural uh, soup that we swim in is just the way it is, right? But the whole point of this project, the Men's Story Project, is to say, you know, we can actually take a critical look at this, um, at the, how boys and men are taught to be men, and we can we can give thanks for things that are beautiful, right? And we can also critique those things that need to be critiqued. And the most powerful way to make that critique is through your own personal experience, right? It's not going to be helpful if somebody like me <laughs> from my living room, you know, just tells people how they should be, right? People learn the most from other people particularly those who they think are, and feel are like them, right? Like we learn from our peers. And so the Men's Story Project really is a powerful um, platform, you know, for you to share your own stories, the stories that you feel are important for you to share, where it would, you know, it would be helpful for you to share for yourself, and also maybe it could help somebody else, right? So this is a, a replicable storytelling and community dialogue project that brings this kind of reflection into public forums. And from a public health standpoint, you know, what we're really trying to do is, is reach hearts and minds, you know, and stimulate people to reflect on their own life, you know, and their own experiences. And, you know, what are they grateful for and what do they want to challenge or maybe change, right? And so these are live events that get filmed to also create films and social media. I'm gonna hit, uh, let's see, I, I'm gonna show you a trailer, which will require a couple of button pushing here. One second. Can you see the screen? I love men. <laughs> There's social training, right? There's ideas of how boys and girls and men and women are supposed to act and look and feel. Okay, so I'm super nervous. Um, very nervous. It's time to break. 
break the cycle, to stop the alcohol abuse, to stop the violence of my father and the violence of my father's father, of all the men in my family who had killed in the name of honor. Urinal or stall? Stall or urinal? My body and mind and soul stepping into the spotlight. Yes. I became hostage to an image of gender. Women good, men evil. I work out four hours a day. I work out when I sit on the couch. I decided to tell my parents that I was gay. Stand aside while Felicia and I guide our children past racism and hate. This project is about healing. It's the place where the floss was yearn. Gold teeth and bling ice on All day I'd been wondering if I could get it up. After all, they were about to cut my ball off. It's not good for the libido. It feels so good before. I chose to be male to express it outwardly what I felt within, but I didn't choose and don't choose all the baggage that comes along with being a man in this society. This is to Jason and to Greg and to Steve and Chris and Dave. We are part of the silent majority of African American men and we are proud to be loving and compassionate men. back into the slides now. All right. So yeah, that's that's the first event that we ever did in 2008. And since then, the project has been growing. Uh, so the bottom line is that each event, you know, has a pretty similar format and the the difference comes obviously in the uniqueness of each story that gets shared. Uh, so in each of the events, there are usually between 10 or 15 presenters and they're sharing their own personal stories with a live audience, as you saw. And the events are followed by dialogue with the audience, you know, so that the audience has the opportunity to talk back and share their own stories or ask questions or reflect, you know, share their reflections and so on. And over time, with the 120 or so presenters that we've worked with, I've seen that there are some key themes that have been coming up in the stories that they're sharing. And those are the ones that are written here of celebrating and challenging and resisting. You know, so men have shared stories that are giving thanks to sources of love and strength and joy in their life you know, family members, traditions that have been strengthening for them, uh, relationships, mentors, father, talking about fatherhood. Um, challenging is, you know, stories that challenge dominant ideas about masculinity that need to be overturned, basically, or that they have internalized or that they've been on the receiving end of and that have fostered some kind of harm or, you know, inhibition in their life. And then resisting is, you know, challenging intersecting forms of oppression that they've also dealt with on the receiving end or unlearning oppressive ideologies themselves, right? So racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, etc. And to create these events, there are workshops that the presenters go through. We're going to do that in Texas, um, which are weekly events where folks get together and they're honing their stories, giving each other feedback, um, learning together about topics related to the content, um, and building community. Uh, and presenters have really gotten a lot out of it from everything that they've shared with me and with the local directors. Um, and the presenters are very diverse. And so we really have our 
hearts and arms open to everyone who wants to be part of this. Um, students, athletes, artists, veterans, leaders, people who've never spoken publicly a day in their life. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the events get filmed to create social media. Uh, a couple of them have been filmed to make actually full length feature films. Uh, and then, you know, we, we might uh, write discussion materials to accompany that film content uh, for educational purposes and so on. Uh, and so overall, the Men's Story Project since 2008 has done a lot of work. Uh, we've had these 28 productions in the US and abroad, worked with 14 schools, made two full-length films. Uh, we have two published evaluation studies in peer-reviewed journals that I'd be happy to share with folks. Uh, if you're interested, just let me know in the chat, and I'm happy to send you the links or the full text. We've worked with amazing partners like UN Women and Amnesty International. We have an amazing advisory council. It's been on lots of media, lots of presentations, um, awards. And then you're also welcome to check out our YouTube channel, which has over 70 stories uh, online of former presenters. You know, and as I mentioned before, presenter, we're so open to your creativity on what you'd like to share. You know, and these are just some examples of the kinds of stories that folks have shared in the past. You know, stories about how they challenged a friend's sexism, how they supported a survivor of sexual assault, their experience with active fatherhood in, in, the, set, in the context of divorce, you know, so they don't live with their um, child, but they're actively engaged. Um, you know, how they ended their own uh, use of violence against a female partner. Uh, there have been some folks who've shared that kind of story and talked about their journey of reflection and change or how they stepped in to prevent or intervene uh, with somebody else's violence or harassment toward others. Uh, for, for folks who are part of the LGBTQ community, um, uh, you know, talking about how they came to a place of pride or self-assertion or resilience. Um, again, journeys of change, ending their own violence, how they sought help for mental health needs, uh, even though they had initially thought that you're not supposed to do that as a man, um, or, you know, growing up in a setting where it was stigmatized, um, how, they, how they unlearned homophobia, how they came to support gender equality, you know, and ultimately these events, when it's lots of folks of very diverse backgrounds standing together, it really becomes collectively an act of solidarity. You know, to have an event where there are men of such diverse backgrounds taking a stand together for healthy masculinities and violence prevention and social justice. And really, you know, for the stories that do address some aspect of personal change, it's really helpful to, to hear from the presenter how they did it, you know, so that folks in the audience can get a sense that they can too. You know, and with all of this, you know, just to say that, you know, this project is definitely aware that we are all works in progress. We're always going to be works in progress. And so nobody's going to get put on a stage or on a platform with the idea of saying, oh, this person has it all figured out. Here is a model, perfect human. <laughs> no, you know, we're, what we're doing is just sharing some of our life in progress, you know, things that we've been reflecting on, things that we've been learning and so on. These are just some images that I wanted to share with you of prior productions, you know, just to give you a sense of the vibe, you know, and the warmth that we've had in this project so far. You know, and it's just been a really beautiful and very um, heartfelt experience. You know, this fellow on the top right is the first person to legally change sex in Chile. And the fellow on the left is Chile's most popular comic. I worked in Chile because my family's from there. So it's very special for me to go back and do this project there. You know. So these are just some uh, this is, I'll, I'll point out the fellow in the middle uh, wearing the Black Lives Matter shirt is the chairman of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York. And he shared a very powerful story about his former perpetration of uh, violence against a female partner. And just had some really powerful reflections around um, the importance of, you know, being woke, not just on the topics of our choosing, but everything, you know, and that to work to liberate others involves working to liberate ourselves. Uh, his story is on YouTube, and you can check it out on our on our YouTube channel. This is work in the in Gaza and the West Bank with you and women. So, and 
at each event, we hand out anonymous audience feedback forms. Yeah, and this is the kind of feedback we get continuously. And I'll just highlight a couple of these. You know, I laughed, cried, and rethought my own prejudices. It was life altering. I gained a new perspective of masculinity from hearing these stories, specifically a desire to change some of the aspects of my own behavior. I learned to stay on the track that I'm on for self-improvement and social change. I'm not alone in the way I feel and think. And that's a big theme uh, for a lot of audience members, realizing that when they were questioning ideas about masculinity that didn't feel healthy to them or helpful, you know, they had before they had felt alone. And it was really helpful to suddenly hear stories from men, you know, that they had never heard before, certainly not in public. You know, so I'll just skip down, you know, there was so much bravery, honesty, and vulnerability shown tonight. It's time for men to be able to share their humanity. Uh, it's time for everyone's healing. So this is just a beautiful example of uh, visual art that was shared as part of this project. Uh, this is from Jorge Artes in Chile. So that's, that's the overview. Um, and I want to hand it over now to Emiliano to talk about uh, the Texas production call for submissions. Thank you, Josie. Thank you everybody for participating in the chat room. We wanna encourage you to continue doing that. A lot of folks are sharing just some of their, their thoughts and their feelings about the trailer as well as a, just about you know sharing a little bit about themselves and their story. Uh, we really appreciate your, your honesty and bravery and your participation in today's webinar. And wanna encourage you to do that because that's what the Texas Men's Story Project is really all about. It's uh, you, you're not alone and, and you're going to be with other other folks who who are ready uh, to share their story and uh, in very creative and unique ways so the Texas Men's Story Project is a is a collaboration between the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault or TASA and the Men's Story Project and we're very excited about bringing this project to Texas as a virtual uh, a virtual production um, and so the, what's unique about this is that the before that the presentations will be all online uh, in September and so if you identify with masculinity in any way you're invited to be a part of this project so if you know anyone who uh, identifies with masculinity in any way that's interested in sharing this story uh, that's being a presenter as part of this project please encourage them to submit their story to us uh, this story is specifically, this project is designed specifically uh, for men 18 and older here in Texas. Uh, we know that there are a lot of young people that have really powerful and really important stories to share, but for the purposes of this project, we are looking for adult men. So if, 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 if you fit in, if you're an adult man and you're interested in being a part of this project, we hope that you will join us. Um, like Josie said earlier, Regardless of your experience with presenting or sharing your story, if you've never done that before, or this would be the first time that you've shared your story publicly, I want to encourage you to, to be a part of this project. Um, so uh, if, if you know somebody uh, who has experience or has no experience at all, please encourage them uh, to submit a story for this project. We're looking for stories that are true and personal. Some folks have shared a little bit about themselves and their stories in the chat box. I would encourage you to, to, to read those and thank them for sharing a little part of themselves. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for those genuine stories, the things that are happening uh, in your life right now with COVID-19, um, the challenges, the experiences that you've had um, in terms of your identity with masculinity. Um, of course, this project is really intended to explore and challenge social ideas about masculinity that we all live with, including myself, uh, including folks uh, in our community. So this really is a way for us to uh, have a, a bigger, broader conversation about uh, these social ideas and masculinity as part of, uh, as part of these presentations. Uh, we're looking for diverse mediums, whether it's poetry, uh, story, letter writing. Uh, you know, you want to share a letter that you you wrote thanking somebody. Um, comedy, music, visual art, 
any type of medium, uh, we want to we, we want to hear from you. So if 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 there's a way that you want to share your story, let us know. And as part of the submission form, there's a question where we ask for you to just describe how you intend to share your story with us. Uh, these stories can be serious, they can be funny, and everything in between. Um, as long as they are real, uh, that's really what we're looking for. And so uh, we want you to bring your entire self to this project. Uh, we want you to use your creativity and the tools that you have um, at hand um, because the, 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 the productions will be virtual. Uh, this is something that you will be doing from the comfort of your home, your car, wherever you can access internet to participate in this project. So this is a really, um, this is really unique because the, the history of the Men's Story Project uh, they, they, they've never done a production uh, virtually. And so we're, we're super excited about that. We hope that you will join us um, in this project. In addition, the, the presentations need to be seven minutes max. And so uh, we wanna encourage you to think about that as you're uh, developing your story and you're not gonna do that alone. Like Josie said, we will be working with you um, and, and the group of presenters and with you one-on-one -on -one to help develop your story um, until you are comfortable and ready to share that, that presentation publicly uh, with the world in September. And in addition to that, we're also inviting participants uh, to record their stories so that we can share those with other folks in the future, not just in the live presentations, but uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to make those available to folks around the state to use in their own communities to engage in discussion uh, with folks uh, in, their, in their local communities around the issue of masculinity. Yeah. Thanks, Emiliano. Um, so I'll just add a couple of notes about uh, the, the subject of violence. You know, so obviously this is being co-sponsored by TASA, the sexual assault, uh, organization, uh, prevention organization. And so we're, we're definitely very interested in receiving pieces that reflect on personal experiences with violence from different standpoints, right? So that might be um, former witnessing it, you know, when you were growing up in your home or uh, having intervened to stop violence from happening or having not intervened and what you might intend to do in the future or speaking up when somebody's, you know, saying sexist jokes or harassing jokes. Um, also former perpetration, as I mentioned before, like your own former perpetration. We're, we're open to receiving stories about that and, um, you, know, so, so, you know, how you supported a survivor. So there's a lot, so many different standpoints and from which one might speak about their experiences of violence and obviously many different forms of violence, you know, men's violence against women and violence against men and violence against folks of all genders. Um, you know, so in general, what we request is that your piece doesn't identify a survivor of violence without their prior express written consent. You know, so really, if there's a way to just focus on your own experience and not share information that would readily identify somebody else that's our preference um our i mean we can't have survivors identified without their consent other than yourself um you know and then with regard to your former potential perpetration if, if there's anybody uh, on this webinar who might be interested in talking about that it's important uh, to know that this process you know of the men's story project workshops that we're going to discuss you know, it's not a, it's basically, you know, it's not a good place for somebody who has literally never gone through any sort of process around their former perpetration. So it's important that you've already gone through either a legal process or a sort of justice process or a therapy process, you know, something so that this isn't literally the first time that you're telling anybody about your former perpetration. Um, and in terms of submissions, also just want to be clear that there is a selection process. So we can't guarantee that all submissions will be accepted. Um, but we definitely are really, really eager uh, to receive your submissions. Um, and we'll be letting you know um, by a certain date. And that is listed here. I don't remember it offhand, uh, but we will be letting you know. Um, 
Emiliana, do you want to talk through the workshops? Yeah, thank you, Josie. Um, all really important things to, to consider. Um, some additional information for you. We will do. We will be doing presenter workshops starting. The schedule is on the submission form, so definitely um, review that. It's going to be. We're going to start those virtual workshops uh, on Thursday, July the twenty third, from seven thirty to nine thirty, and uh, they will be every Thursday at the same time uh, for six weeks. And we hope that you will consider. Uh, joining us for those, it is a it is sort of a requirement of, of participation in this project. So during those presenter workshops, we're going to be honing our stories, building community, learning together, exploring issues around masculinities, and so uh, it will be an opportunity to reflect together, uh, to engage in dialogue, uh, to hold each other accountable, to challenge each other, uh, to encourage each other. So uh, me and Josie will be facilitating those uh, presenter workshops. Uh, we will be talking about masculinities, relationships, fatherhood, men's health, survivorship, allyship, intersections with race and other identities. So all the things that, that, uh, that the Men's Story Project has, has spoken to, we're going to explore. And you'll, you can see sort of a, get an idea on the submission form of other stories that have been shared uh, we definitely encourage you to review those on your own time. But uh, if you have any questions about the virtual presenter workshops, please let us know. Um, again, they will be starting on July the 23rd through August the 27th. And we ask that folks have, uh, attend at a, a minimum of four of those virtual uh, workshops, uh, especially the first one and the sixth one, just to make sure that we uh, develop group cohesion and that folks are prepared for the, the presentations in September. And so uh, you are not alone. So if you're nervous like I am, uh, <laughs> you're not alone. And some folks in the chat box have shared um, how anxious they are about sharing their story. Don't worry, you're not gonna be sharing your story. You're not gonna be sharing your story alone. Uh, me and Josie and, and Josh will be walking you through this process uh, together. And so, um, for those folks that aren't gonna be a part of this project, but just really want to support us and help to get the word out about this project, we will be doing five live presentations in September. And so um, we hope that you will join us in attending, encouraging your family, friends, coworkers, classmates, uh, all the people in your life to attend one of the, the virtual live uh, productions. Um, and in addition to that, the stories uh, will be filmed and, and, and shared. Um, so, so that's something to consider as well. If you are comfortable with that, we'll be asking for your consent. So even if you're, even if you're unsure about that and you need time to think about it or you have questions about uh, recording and sharing your story, please let us know uh, if you have any questions about that. But you will be, uh, we will ask participants to sign uh, a consent and a release for that if you want your story to be recorded and shared in the future. So the whole idea of this project is not just to share our stories as part of these live uh, productions, but um, to be able to share them in the future, um, to be able to use them as tools to engage in conversations around masculinities um, in local communities. And so uh, we're really excited about this project and we really hope that you will consider joining us. But if you're still not sure, we wanna encourage you to contact, uh, contact us with any questions or concerns that you have. So I just wanna also jump in and just make one uh, quick clarification, which is that if you do not want your story to be filmed, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And you can still participate. Absolutely. So. Uh, so we have a presenter release form, which is about protecting your rights as a storyteller and also ensuring that we have clarity on what your, what your preference is. So you can definitely participate in this project, um, you know, just participating in the live events, sharing your story online. Um, and, and you can tell us, I do not consent to being recorded. I do not want my story up on YouTube. And we will oblige that. <laughs> so just want to be super clear that you do not have to consent to be filmed uh, to be part of this. You can say no. Um, and you can also choose like 
you know, if you want to be online, but with a different name so that you're not as easily findable by folks at work, for example, we can do that, you know, and there's a place to indicate on the storyteller form, you know, what name you would prefer to have used online and things like that. So anyway, we're super available to talk about that with you uh, to ensure that you feel totally uh, comfortable. Thank you, Josie. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, definitely please, please help spread the word. Uh, the call for submissions is online. Um, Josh, can you, I think you've been putting that link up, right? If you could just put that link up one more time on the chat for the call for submissions, please. Um, and the due date for that is July 7th by 11 p.m. CST. Um, if you're able to send us a full draft, it's super helpful because it really helps us get a sense of what your story is that you'd want to share. Um, if you don't have time, uh, then a, a detailed concept paragraph is also is also fine. Uh, but if you're able, you'll you'll I'll tell you, I'll put it this way: you have stronger chance of being accepted. <laughs> you know, if you're able to send us a full draft, it's it's just really helpful so that we can have more of a sense of of uh, your story and what it is that you where you're coming from and what you want to share. Yeah. Thank you, Joseph. And I'll just. Yeah, and I'll just close here with a quick quote that I wrote back in 2008, you know, storytelling, what is it for? Uh, for preserving and passing on traditions, but also for challenging and breaking traditions and creating new traditions. Uh, so folks have often talked about the Men's Story Project uh, as revolutionary, and I definitely want to uh, help it be as revolutionary as possible. In terms of contact info, here it all is. Uh, so here are the websites, these are the Twitter handles, uh, for questions about the project, please contact Josh. Um, and then if you have specific questions about, you know, the MSP or TASA, uh, our emails are at the bottom. If you have questions about, you know, sensitive matters or, you know, specifically violence, you're welcome to email me directly. Um, but Josh is also, um, you know, very able to receive them and he'll forward any questions to me as needed. So we're all here for you uh, to just be responsive to any, any kinds of questions or curiosity you might have. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna stop the screen share.